Hello everyone, my name is Phu Nguyen, I'm from the Department of Civil Engineering at Monash University. Uh, today I am going to give a presentation on the topic of computational modeling of the deformation and fracture of solids. <clears throat> Let me begin with uh, the analysis of my friends and collaborators. First is the Professor Jin Gu at South China University of Technology, who helped me a lot with the variational uh, phase field modeling. Uh, second person is Stefan Stefan Bogdras at the University of Luxembourg, has been nice to me all the way back 2004. And next is Dr. Armand Vokakwe, now a senior lecturer at Deakin University, who has been working with me on the MPM, the Tour of Point Method. And Dr. Sina Sinai, uh, now at Unimawan. He was doing a postdoc at Monash, so we we did some work together. I also would like to thank you, my former PhD student, Tusha Mandel, now assistant professor at IIT Bombay, India. He was uh, an excellent student. And finally, I would like to acknowledge the ARC to have granted me the, the DECRA. Now I uh, give you a brief uh, view of my education. So I graduated from University of Technology, Ho Chi Minh City University of Technology. I'm not familiar with the English name of this you know, uni. In 2003, I got a bachelor in civil engineering and then I got a master from Liège University. My supervisors were Professor Nguyen Duncan and Stefan Bordas. And I got a PhD in computational mechanics uh, in 2011 from TU Delft, uh, Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands with Professor Buslice. And then I did some postdoc, but uh, mostly uh, postdoc with Stefan again at Cardiff University in, in the UK from 2012 to 2014. And then after that, uh, I came to Monash. So that's the. So now I give you a brief summary of my less so called performance. So I have written 20 peer-reviewed journal papers, two books published with Springer, three book chapters, uh, received citation of 9,000 and with an H index of 43, according to Google Scholar. I have one PhD student graduated. Yes, you remember, if you still remember, that is Tusha uh, Mendo. I got one ASC deck graph funding uh, on the topic of pyrolytic fracture and modeling. I am in the editor, editorial board of engineering fracture mechanics and the associate editor of journal of theoretical and computer, computational and applied mechanics. Oh. So now let's move on to the what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, it's mostly uh, the computational modeling of the deformation and fracture of solids. And I am going to present two topics within the team. Is one is the modeling of fracture of solid using the phase field method. And the second is topic is the material point method. But before that, I want, this is the problem that that, that I am interested in. You see, this is a steel pipe, and then under the 
a pressure of the glass contained in this pipe it deforms and and then when the pressure is too much then it is is, is fractured and there are three ways to to tackle this problem the first is for people who are very good at mathematics here i show you two giant mathematicians Euler and Lagrange so we can do theoretical investigation build uh, some equations etc the second approach is uh, experimental you see here we have uh, Mr. F Michael Faraday so we go to the lab and then we do some testing and then we understand more about the phenomena and then the final approach which came only in the 1950s when the computer became um, powerful that is computational modeling okay so everything is built on a computer and we, we do everything there okay? and this is the approach that i that i followed okay so how we do that computational simulation so we start with the balance equations okay, this is from uh, from theoretical mechanics okay so we take it to get to we take them the balance equations and then constitute models and then these two balance equations are mostly uh, partial differential equations and and with the domain is very complicated okay you can imagine the domain is a car vehicle for example cannot solve these equations uh, exactly or analytically so we have to do some discretization okay easy to easy to digitize the these equations so that's why we introduce a mesh okay so a mesh is just a discrete object and after this step you have a huge algebraic equations okay algebraic equations like s square plus 2s is equal 5 okay it's something we can manage to do is much easier than the the pdes partial differential equations but we have hundreds of thousands of such, of such equations okay so you cannot solve it by hand neither so the next step is to program this in a using a programming language like Fortran, c plus plus julia python matlab whatever and after this step done you can do all kinds of stuff like if you're more inclined more to the theory you can do convergence analysis again okay, to see how the the method uh, works uh, how the method performs so convergence means that if you refine the mesh and then the error should be should be going down okay and how much down is is different but it should be going down here you see the element size when this element is becoming smaller and smaller you see that the error is going down this is good and then we do own sort of we call virtual uh, virtual uh, virtual uh, experiments okay because you do we don't go to the lab and build the physical stuff uh, and, and and do the experiment there we just sit in front of a computer we build this and then we do all kinds of uh, stuff okay that is basically the job of a computational engineer but i think it's a better word uh learned from former uh death Belisco is computational scientist because uh, we don't build real thing okay not a real car or real building okay so it should be called computational scientist but anyway so now i go going to explain a little bit how we do this step okay the step that going from the balance equations to the algebraic equations that the computer can solve and for that step usually we have two two ways yeah, the first is mass based and the second is mass free 
So in a mesh-based method, you have a mesh, okay? Uh, a mesh is a partition of a space into a finite number of non-overlapping polygons in 2D, okay? And then in this category, you have finite difference method, okay? Appear first in, in, in history, and then you have finite element methods came after and then we have finite volume method so finite volume method is more for fluid and uh, i have no idea about fluid so I, I focus on finite element method fem the advantages of a mass based method is that it is very efficient and accurate But the problem with FEM is that it's prone to the mesh distortion. So if you have very large deformation, okay, maybe you apply a force here too too large, and then this portion becomes distorted. Okay, then the polygon is no longer uh, and is no longer up a well shaped. Okay, so in that case, the convergence of the FEM is reduced significantly or sometimes the, the, the simulation just just stops. So people think of, okay, let's forget the mesh, okay? So, because that's the problem. So they invented the mesh-free method. So in mesh-free method, you just have a bunch of points. You see, here you have a bunch of points, or the conic particles are points. And then in there, you have many, many, uh, uh, methods like EFG994, SPH1977, particle fam maybe around 2000, and MPM994 as well. Of course, these methods are free of mesh distortion. And I am working with MPM. The question why? I don't know. I just like it. So maybe because of its simplicity compared to other uh, mess-free methods. Okay. So now next, we we postpone the discussion on the MPM to the later of of, the, of my presentation. Now I'm talking about the topic of modeling of fracture. So here you have we have a plate. And then we introduce a notch here, okay, using a saw or whatever. I, I, I don't care, just have a notch here. And then we apply a traction here on the bottom. And uh, on the bottom and the top edge, we apply a notch. Of course, we have some boring conditions there. This is a dynamics problem. And you can see, okay, that from the notch, a crack is initiated and propagating to the to the to the right, and suddenly it branches into two part, and then uh, different branches uh, occur as well. So this is a difficult problem. I think it's one of the most difficult problem in solid mechanics because we have a moving internal boundary problem. Okay, this boundary we don't know in advance. Okay, because these are the, the solution to the problem. And in order to, to deal with this problem, people developed um, different theories. First is damage mechanics, and fracture mechanics, including cohesive zone model. And then one of the latest development is phase field or variational damage. And these theories has been have been applied to different materials like concrete, rocks, ceramics, metals. I think all the materials available on Earth. <clears throat> and I focus on the variational fracture, Be not only because it's the latest uh, player in, in, in this game, but it has some nice attributes. The first attribute is that this phase shear fracture can really handle complex cracks. By complex cracks, you mean that the crack pattern is, is really complicated. So here I have a, 
a cylinder and then I applied an internal pressure in the inner rim okay this material is pretty it's like you can think of ceramic and apply an internal pressure on this rim and then some cracks are initiated around the inner rim that's that's reasonable and then some stopped propagating but some continue propagating until it reached the outer limits okay so modeling this is quite challenging but with phase view is quite easy so I would say straightforward uh, I show you this is 2d so maybe you say 2d is, is easy now it's 21st century we should do something more complicated so this is three uh, dimensional crack problem problem so you have a 3d beam with a very weird notch like this one the idea is that we have a very complicated non planar crack surface then this is the crack surface non planar you can see yeah and we shown this on a fixed finite element mesh that makes the implementation easy okay so that's conclude the part on the model in our fracture with phase field method in summary with a fixed final element mesh and a quite straightforward implementation we can really capture complicated crack pattern that's the essence of the phase field now we move to the material point method and this method is also simple. I own, always work with simple method. Okay, I, I, I stay away from complicated method. And it can handle very complicated, uh, quite complicated uh, problems that I show here. This is the cell, cellular structures. Uh, we compress it up to 40%. We have lots of contacts, okay? hundreds of contacts and even shelf contacts. It is fluid, uh, fluid and solid interaction. This is the high velocity impact problem. This is also high velocity impact problem, and this is fracture of metal. This is a, a nice application of the MPM. So we have a form material. Uh, we have the microstructure of this material with the CT scan and f from the C C CT scan we have immediately the computational model because we just convert its picture to a, to a material point and then from that we can do the simulation we don't have to do the machine which is quite complicated so this is image based analysis has very large deformation lots of contacts as you can see between the structs itself i show you a high velocity impact problem here you have spherical uh, sphere impacting a steel plate high per velocity impact uh, is involves massive deformation and the simulation runs well with the mpm this is uh, done by Caramello. This is an in-house C++ code written by Anbar de Book of May. Uh, so, to conclude the on the part on the MPM, this is a simple method that can handle massive deformation. Uh, And, and that's it, so thank you for your attention.